I rejoiced with those who said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. So welcome to the house of the Lord. And it's good to see some long lost travelers from the North Company, North uh, Country back. Jesse and Diana and Cassidy, welcome. It's good to see you. And um, uh, we also have Sharon Goodson somewhere here. There she is. Sharon, welcome. And she's getting ready to travel too. I, I hope you don't mind me saying that. So. And so um, welcome to all of you, all you visiting today. I, I hope you feel uh, the warm presence of Jesus Christ in this beautiful sanctuary. So um, I don't have any announcements. Uh, do we have any announcements? I was given instructions by Rhonda to tell y'all that we're having youth meeting today at 5 o'clock. Please be there. I'm reminding you. <laughs> okay, I've got uh, three uh, announcements. The Brotherhood and the George Fisher Sunday School class we're sending $500 to the Baptist men to help with the hurricanes. If anybody would like to add any additional money to that today, see Donna Rummage, okay? Uh, number two, in two weeks, we're gonna be auctioning off the fire pit that we have outside our Sunday school class. Please buy tickets. And again, all that money is going to the bazaar. Uh, the third thing I have downstairs, in the kitchen, the refrigerator door it's got two doors, if you face it, the door to the left is not shutting properly. That's something we need to work on, but you can easily leave that door open if you're not careful. So until we get that fixed, left door on the refrigerator downstairs, make sure you close it, please. Thank you. Okay, uh, first I want to let everybody know about we have supply pastors for the month of October, and I want to let you know who that will be. We have Jay Whitley on the 1st, Robert Dry on the 8th, Daryl Maxwell on the 15th, the uh, East Row and Honors Course will be on the 22nd, and Bob Rummage has the 29th. We also have several folks that have are filled in for um, November and December, but we have some openings as well, so if any of you feel called to speak uh, from the pulpit, please let me know, or somebody else on the uh, church and ministry committee. Um, then I want to update everybody about the uh, pastor search process. We met on Wednesday night. We had a team building exercise. Uh, we had communion and we reviewed the uh, pastor search process. The next thing, next step in the process is going to be developing a church profile, and that's what those surveys are about. So we ask you to please fill those out and either give them to the church office or put them in the collection box back in the foyer. Um, and please have that done in no more than two weeks because uh, we want to get those and, and incorporate what you say into the church profile. Um, oh, um, did anybody not get the questions? Uh, um, they weren't in the yeah. bulletin. What's that? They weren't in the bulletin. Oh, well, we handed them out to several people. Maybe. Oh, okay. Um, oh. All right, if you would raise your hand if you need one. Um, Bob and Frank will bring them by. And they'll also be coming out with the newsletter and via email to make sure that, you know, we get good response from everybody. I believe that's it. Is there anything else from the Pastor Search Committee? All right, thank you. <laughs> the uh, Christian Education Committee and the Worship Committee, those who are able to come, are going to meet together this afternoon at 2 o'clock. Uh, we're going to be talking about the ongoing Christian Education Program in our church. Not only are they invited, but anybody in this church that's invited, that, 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 is, that is interested in being a part of Christian education in our church. 
Uh, that, that doesn't mean you have to teach Sunday school or anything else, but if, you, if you're interested in this Christian education program in our church, we'd like for you to come this afternoon. You can be old, young, in between, it doesn't matter. But our Christian education program needs some help, and we need you to help us. So we're going. We're, what I'm going to be doing is about a two-hour workshop from two o'clock to four o'clock. So if you can give us two hours of your time, I think we can come up with some some ways to help us out a little bit. So if you will, please come at two o'clock. We'll be in the fellowship hall. <coughs> Thank you, Jay. <coughs> Any other announcements, David? And uh, Jeff Cook agreed to do the uh, pastor search retreat that we were going to have this Saturday at, um, at the church at 8.30 a.m. I assume we'll meet down in the fellowship hall and we'll be done at 11.30. If you're able to make it, please do. Thank you. The, just the pastor search committee. Thank you all. Well, let's turn to our hymnals, page 33, and we'll sing verses 1 and 4 as we begin worship with immortal, invisible, God only wise. Let us rise. <laughs> Sing praise to God who rescues us when we fall. Sing, Sing praise, praise to God who walks with us on all our journeys. Even though we fall, God lifts us and places us on paths of peace. Even though we stray, God finds us and brings us back to lives of hope. Thanks be to God whose love is continually with us. Praise be to God, whose mercy is over us all. Amen. And our opening hymn is on page 730, Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus.
us pray. <clears throat> Lift up your heads, O you gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. So, Lord, we open the gates of Grace Lower Stone Church and the gates of our heart to you. And we say, come, Lord Jesus, be in our midst. Inspire us and hear our prayers, hear our praise and our thanksgiving. And we affirm our faith to you together as we say aloud the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he arose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. And this morning we have some special music, Forgive Our Sins, performed by Brent Agner and Leslie Kepley. I'd like to ask the deacons to come forward as we have our call to offering. Uh, as God has so richly blessed us, let us return a portion of these blessings to God, asking that these gifts may be used in service to others through the ministry and mission of this church. Let us receive our morning offering in our offertories, verses 1 and 2 of Holy, Holy, Holy on page 3.
Let us rise for the doxology. <laughs> Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Let us pray. Lord, we lift up these offerings to you in thanksgiving, for you have given us everything we have, and we can only return a little portion to you out of love and out of worship. So please accept these offerings. Bless the offerings that we lift up to you. Bless the hearts that have given them. Through Christ our Lord's name we pray. Amen. And please be seated. This morning we have for the children's message, Mrs. Kathy Whitley. Good morning. Don't we'll have too many up here this morning, do we? Okay, well, both of you are in school, so um, I'm going to ask you a question. Does your school have a lost and found yes. box? <coughs> they do? It's like a coat rack. Okay, it's not actually a box. Box is under it. Okay, we're getting a sophisticated lost and found box. Well, I've got a lost and found box here, and we're going to see what kind of items we've got in it. Um, let's see, well, we've got some gloves, now somebody may need these a little bit later on, haven't they? We won't need them right now, but when it gets a little colder, um, uh, here's a scarf. Well, somebody might need that too when it gets a little colder. And here's a cap could use that now, but especially when it gets colder. Well, what do you do if you lose something that's important to you? What? Yeah, you go look in the lost and found. What if you lose something at home? What do you do? Okay, you just tear your room apart trying to find it? No, you don't go to that length. Okay, not that important, right? Okay. Yes, you do. Okay. <laughs> yeah. so you're going to make sure everything stays straightened out, right? Nope. <laughs> okay, well, there's a story in the Bible about a shepherd who had 100 sheep and one of those sheep got lost and he was concerned because you know, sheep aren't very smart he was afraid that the sheep might fall off the cliff or something so um, he left the 99 sheep that were still where they were supposed to be and went to look for the one that was lost and that's how it is with us and God. Sometimes we get lost, but God is always interested in finding us and bringing us back to where we ought to be. Okay? So don't be too concerned about getting lost because God's going to come and find you no matter where you are. Um, we're God's children, and God doesn't give up on us. He's going to keep searching for us until we want to accept him. So let's have a prayer this morning. Father, we're your children, and you love each and every one of us. We're thankful that you don't give up on us when we get lost. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Now, this morning we have a special treat from Miss Donna. So I'll let you put your hand in the bag and get one handful, not two. Thank you, Kathy. <clears throat> well, let's turn our attention to prayer. And, you know, I was really, I mean, it was terrible last week with Hurricane Irma, but, gee, it could have been a lot worse. It still was horrible for um, Florida and, and beyond. But So I, I believe that God listens to our prayers. And so do we have any prayer requests for this morning? hospital up in Pennsylvania to a long-term care facility. Uh, she has been very, very ill, and we would like to remember her. He, I believe, is on his way back, so he can go to work this week. Okay. Michelle is staying up there to, to look after her, so please remember both of them and, and Chris. Thank you, Jay. Other requests? Bill Hartwell. Bill Hartwell. Bill Hartwell. Okay, thank you, Jenny. Other requests? Okay. Other requests? And we can remember Sharon Goodson as she travels away. Other requests? The warrior written uh, friend of ours, uh, her brother was recently diagnosed with stage four pancreatic cancer. Um, it was, it's a pretty serious shape. That was Loria, right? Lori, Lori Lo Redden, yes. Yeah, Lori. Yeah, Lori. Okay. Other requests. Steve Bobbenbaum. Anything else? Well, let us pray. The stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. O oh Lord, save us. O oh Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We celebrate our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the one who the builders rejected. Although he came to the world to save us, we did not receive him. 
and he loves us anyway. So we praise you and thank you, Lord. You give us life. You give us all spiritual blessings. You give us healing. You give us peace. You give us success. And we ask for all these things for this church and every person here or every person absent. Lord, we remember those who are sick and suffering and the broken. We remember Keith Bowersox and Michelle as they have uh, been attending to their mother, Francis. And we pray for traveling mercies for both Keith and, and Michelle and, and that you would help them as they um, juggle all these different things. We pray for Francis and her strength um, to be restored and for her health to be restored. Please touch these three very devout Christians and, and help them. We pray for Bill Hartwell, and we ask, Lord, for your healing hand to be upon him and that you would protect him from this cancer that has been diagnosed. We remember John Henson, and we're discouraged that this tumor has returned so we pray, Lord, that you would be kind to him, be merciful to him, and heal him. We pray for Polly Bost and her healing and strengthening, especially now that she's had to move from one home to another. We remember her, her family and, and ask for your, your um, care of them as well. We pray for Bob and Donna Rummage. We remember Sharon Goodson and her family, and we ask, Lord, that you would be kind to them in, in the struggles that they, 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 um, that they are having. We pray for Sharon's well-being as she, as she goes to, to visit her daughter. We pray for Loria Retton and her, her brother who has stage four cancer. We ask, Lord, that you would heal him and strengthen him. Lord, there are others who are sick and suffering, some right in our midst, and we pray, Lord, that you would be kind to them and that you would heal and help them. Um, we, we remember that, that uh, sickness and pain can be so discouraging. So not only is there the physical wound, there's the, the wound of the heart. So we pray, Lord, that all the ones we've mentioned and, and others that we haven't mentioned would be encouraged. Lord, we pray for those who um, have sad and mourning hearts, um, for those who have lost loved ones, and we pray, Lord, that you would comfort and console them. We ask, Lord, that you would bless us all with that joy of, of, of each day that you give to us, that we could rejoice because this is the day that you have made. Lord, we remember... Um, others who are discouraged or troubled. And we, we uh, think about all those people in Florida, uh, in the Caribbean, uh, in Georgia, and elsewhere, in Texas, that are still uh, ravaged by the storms that have gone there. Lord, we pause now for any silent prayer request to be given to you. Lord, we ask that you would bless our country, that you would bless our community, that you would bless our church. We uh, thank you for David um, Maxwell and his leadership on the search committee. And we pray for your blessing on all the people that are active in that. We ask that you would, that you would send just the right person, your special shepherd to this flock, and that they would receive him and... and um, and receive uh, your proxy of Jesus Christ who you send to each church. Lord, we, we ask that you would um, be with our leaders in our country. 
uh, nationally and locally, and we, p we remember those who serve our country in the armed forces. And we pray, Lord, you would protect them. And we, um, we give you thanksgiving in the deepest way for those who have given their lives for our freedom. Lord, we remember those in uniform who serve us as policemen and uh, firemen and other professions and ask for their safety as well as those soldiers far away. Finally, Lord, we pray the prayer, the one that you taught us, the one that begins, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let's rise to worship uh, for our, our hymn of worship, Savior, like a shepherd, lead us on page 688. <laughs> Our scripture for today comes from Romans chapter 14, verses 5 through 12. <clears throat> one man esteems one day as better than another, while another man esteems all days alike. 
Let everyone be fully convinced in his own mind. He who observes the day observes it in honor of the Lord. He also who eats, eats in honor of the Lord, since he gives thanks to God, while he who abstains, abstains in honor of the Lord and gives thanks to God. None of us lives to himself, and none of us dies to himself. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother? Or you, why do you despise your brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So each of us shall give account of himself to God. Let us rise and sing the glory of Patre. We heard this in our passage. You then, why do you judge your brother? Or why do you look down on your brother? For we will all stand before God's judgment seat. Now, if I judge others, then the only real Christians are just like me. If there is any variation in what someone else might believe, in what others do, or even in what they look like, I might judge them. And our scripture tells all of us, including me, to not judge. Only God can judge. So for all of us, as we talk about judging others today, real Christians are not like us. The Christian faith, quite frankly, is a mess in terms of unity. Perhaps Jesus gave us a foreshadowing of that when he picked the 12 apostles who argued all the time about everything, including what color the carpet should be in the church. Um, there are major differences in the Christian faith. And these differences are more widespread in the Christian faith than in, I think, any other major world religion. So the Christian faith as a whole, including us, may be the last ones to get the message. Don't judge. Christians do judge. Congregations and denominations split up regularly or are divided regularly on what to believe or what to do. And there is, especially in America, a decline in membership of Christian churches. And I think that part of it is partially due to the toxic and evil judging that we see that takes place regularly in churches. Now this is going to be my last story for you all. And I was m thinking about this when I came in. You know, I tell you these stories. And when I was a kid, there was a, m a show called Dragnet. 
And remember what they always said at the beginning, that the names have been changed to protect the innocent. So on all my stories, they, the names have been changed, but this is truly a true story. And it was told to me by a woman I'll call Barbara. She and her family were members of a large urban Presbyterian church, and it had several hundred members. We might call it a mega church. It was loaded with programs and activities. You know, they had divorce care on Thursday nights, basketball on Tuesday nights, yoga on Monday nights. There were Bible classes and spiritual classes on Wednesday night, and there were things even during the day so one could conceivably spend every day of the week at church, yet only once or twice a month did people really attend one of the multiple worship services, Saturday night and a couple of services on Sunday. And Barbara and her family were no different than the, the pack, the rest. Their motivation in the early years that they went there was to raise their children in the Christian faith. But ironically, when their kids came to adulthood, they weren't even Christians in terms of their beliefs or their practices. Well, after the kids had left church, Barbara and her husband kind of weren't attending that much. And unfortunately for Barbara, her husband strayed from the marriage. He did become unfaithful. And unfortunately for Barbara, she told me how she found out by mistake or the starting point. She had his phone by mistake one time. And she looked at the phone log. And there were all these conversations with a woman she knew. And then a friend confirmed to her as she was started to kind of look into this. Your husband's having an affair with your friend. Well, as things got worse, and then as Barbara and her husband separated, Barbara did reach out to her church. Uh, she even went to divorce care class, even though she wasn't divorced yet. Word got around in some circles rather quickly about Barbara's troubles. People would talk about their perceptions on what was wrong. You know, if Barbara's husband of over 30 years wasn't such a boozer, everything would be okay. And there were others that said, if Barbara would only show her husband some attention, then he wouldn't stray. And there were even assaults as well on their moral and their Christian faith. One person said, if they were really saved, this wouldn't happen. Despite all the programs that the church offered, Barbara needed some friends. She needed some people who wouldn't judge her, who were available to listen and be compassionate, even with all those things that they had. She needed somebody like Jesus. But Jesus didn't have anyone like him in this successful Christian church. And Barbara quit going to that church and any other Christian church permanently. Judging people is something that we can do with our mouths. But judging people is something that we do with our hearts. And people know, whether we say it or not, when we're being judged, or that, that they're being judged. So the Christian way, obviously, isn't easy for any of us because we all, including your pastor, have a tendency to judge. It might, I might not say it, but I might think something. So we do seek the way of Jesus, and that's why we come together here, encourage each other daily while it is still today. 
Christian churches, according to the scripture, are to devote themselves to the word. And we do that to become more and more like Jesus. This means we seek to judge less and to love more. So the challenge, my friends, is to not judge. Don't judge with your mouth. Don't judge with your heart. And we all need help with this challenge. And so I'll close with a prayer you can take home that's a little familiar, but it's a little bit different. God, grant me the serenity to accept people who are different than me. Courage to not judge others. And wisdom to know that differences don't make a difference. Amen. Our closing hymn is on page 690. He leadeth me. Let's rise to sing this. to beat you. May the wind blow at your back. May the sun shine warmly on your face and may the rain fall gently on your field. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord smile upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his eyes upon you and grant you peace. Amen. Thank you.